Hi there, welcome to a video on negative indices. Negative indices. If any number is put to a negative power, the fraction version of that number is turned upside down. So let's see how that works. If we've got x to the minus 1, now it's got a negative power there, a minus 1. Now remember x, or any uh, whole number for that matter, can be written as x over 1, can't it? So the fraction version of x is actually x over 1. So if we're required, uh, if we can uh, write x to the minus 1 in the form of um, a term without a negative power, what happens is the fraction version of x will be turned upside down. So x to the minus 1 ends up being 1 over x. So x could have been um, expressed with a 1 on the bottom of it, but when uh, we have a negative power, to kind of use up that negative power, we can express x to the minus 1 as 1 over x. See how that pans out as a pattern now. Um, so that's our guiding idea. x to the minus 2. x is being put to the power of 2, but it has a minus there. There are two separate ideas there. Um, with the minus, we think of the fraction form of that with uh, x being over 1 usually, or anything can be written as being over 1 in fraction form. Now if that's turned upside down and the x keeps the power of 2, that turns into 1 over x squared. You see in these, these right hand versions here, we're writing them with the x on the bottom or the x squared on the bottom and it's almost like we've used up the negative part of the original indice uh, when we turn it upside down. So we think of it that way an x to the minus 3. The x is being cubed here but it's got a minus indice so to sort of process that we'll turn the x over 1 which is there invisibly upside down and we'll keep uh, the indice of 3 attached to the x so it'll end up being 1 over x cubed. So there's sort of two different formats of these terms here. We've got negative indices or we turn the fraction version upside down and the x in each case keeps the numeral that is part of the original indice. So here, it's almost like we can imagine x still having a 1 there, but we don't have to write it in. And in uh, x to the minus 2, the x kept the squared bit, but it ends up being on the bottom of the fraction. And x to the th minus 3 ends up being uh, written in that form. So it's an interesting idea. A negative indice kind of turns things upside down. So here are the, so some uh, examples to show the sorts of questions we get with negative indices. We're asked to express with positive indices. In other words, we're going to, going to be uh, required to kind of use up the negative part of the indice. So m to the minus 1, if x to the minus 1 ends up being 1 over x, m to the minus 1, uh, we take that uh, idea that um, the m would have had a 1 under it if it was written in fraction form. So we've kind of used up the uh, minus part of the indice by flipping it upside down. We call it reciprocating. So m to the minus 1 ends up 1 over m. Let's see how that pans out. p to the minus 3. We turn that upside down and we have 1 over p, p cubed. Now the p still got the 3 as the indice but, um, but it's on the bottom of the fraction now. Now here's one we've got to be a little careful of. We've got am to the minus 4. This am part doesn't have a bracket around it, so that minus 4 indice is only really attached to the m. The a is a normal a. So we'll try and separate those ideas. We have a, uh, which we could write as a over 1, being multiplied by something that is 1 over m to the 4. So we processed that uh, m to the minus 4 bit, we turned it upside down and used up the minus, um, and we've got that sort of idea. So it ends up with a fr uh, multiplication of fractions here. We're allowed to multiply across the top and across the bottom. So that would be kind of thinking that a is times by 1 to make a normal a, and 1 lots of m to the 4 on the bottom to create that bit. So if we're going to be trying to express these original terms and we're trying to process them so they don't have any uh, negative indices anymore, we've processed the uh, m to the minus 4 and made that uh, 1 over m to the 4 and we've kind of combined it with the other uh, term, the a, which didn't have a negative indice.
So that's an interesting, it's almost like two questions at once there. We're processing the A into fraction form and we're processing the M to the minus 4 into its form and then writing our final answer. You'll notice all of our final answers here uh, have positive indices, not negative indices anymore. Okay, now this is a really interesting one. We're taking a, uh, a negative uh, indice term that was on the bottom, but you can understand if, if we turn that upside down to use up its negative part of its indice, if we turn that, that upside down, a negative term that was on the bottom ends up being back up the top if we're using up its uh, negative part of the indice. So that ends up being uh, turned upside down, y to the 5, the, uh, the power of 5 stayed attached to the y, but uh, when we've used up the minus there, we reciprocate or turn upside down that fraction, and it ends up being a positive term up the top of the fraction there. Now we don't also have to uh, continue to write the 1 on the bottom of any fraction, so we could just write that as y to the 5. So uh, all these other examples have negative uh, indices making it turn upside down and have the, uh, the letter term underneath. If, if our negative was on the bottom and we want to use up the negative part, um, it ends up being up the top expressed as a positive uh, indice. And this one's another combination one, a bit like our am to the minus 4 here. We've got a being cubed and b being put to the power of minus 6. Let's separate those ideas and write them both as fractions. So a cubed is a cubed over 1 if it's written in fraction form. And b to the minus 6 could be expressed as 1 over b to the 6. And then we'll multiply across the top and across the bottom and just write it out as, uh, as a final term, both uh, terms having positive indices here. If we multiply across the top, we have a to the a cubed times 1 and 1 times b to the 6. So that way we get to process the uh, term that had the negative indice and express it finally without, with just having positive indices there. So that's a good range of examples to see there. Now here's another way we get questions on negative indices. Let's have a look. We, if we want to evaluate this, we're kind of processing normal numbers now, not just letters. So a negative, see how the uh, this one's got a negative 2 as its indice here? Now that negative means that the fraction that it's op operating on here should be turned upside down. And so we've flipped the, um, the 3 quarters to make it 4 over 3, and we've used up the minus, and it's being squared there. Now there's a rule that says when you're squaring a bracket, uh, and th there's fractions in that bracket, the square should operate on the 4 and on the 3. It should operate on the numerator and the denominator. So we'll end up having 4 squared on the top over 3 squared on the bottom, which is 16 over 9. So if we didn't have a calculator, we'd have to process this. The, what we did there was turn it upside down to use up the minus, and then use a rule that says when you're squaring a fraction, it squares the top and the, uh, the bottom, and getting a final answer there. So uh, yeah, that's a number version of an example there. Now why does this whole thing work? Well, I'll just uh, look at it in a slightly different way just to um, process this. Negative indices can come about when we have uh, examples such as this, where we have... Um, two terms that are being divided. Now when we divide terms with indices, we're supposed to subtract the indices. But if we subtracted this, we'd have 3 minus 5 here. Let's see how this, this works. 3 minus 5 would be our rule, and we would have a to the minus 2. So that's a, a scenario where we've created a term with a negative indice. Now how does that work? I'll just illustrate that a little bit. a cubed, which was our original question, if we wrote that out we'd have a times a times a, which is a cubed. On the bottom, a to the 5 is uh, 5 a's all multiplying with each other. Now if we did this uh, dividing, if we wanted to simplify this, we can find something that goes into the top and the bottom. Um, so a goes into the top once and into the bottom once. a can go again into the top once and into the bottom once and into the top once, and into the bottom once. So if we notice what we've got on the top here, we have 1 times 1 times 1, so we only have a 1 on the top that, uh, that's left after we've done our cancelling. On the bottom we've got an a times an a, which is an a squared, um, and that's multiplying by 1. So in the end, when we do a bit of cancelling to simplify this, we end up with... I'll just cancel these out, <laughs> I'll just do the quick uh, markings here again. Okay, when we've done our cancelling here, we end up with 1 on the top, 
or 1 times 1 times 1, and a times a times 1 on the bottom. So that's kind of illustrating that if we think about it in expanded form, we can really easily see that that rule that says uh, when we're dividing indices, we subtract the indices. We got a, a to the minus 2 using that method. And uh, if we talked about it, if we thought about it in um, expanded form and did some cancelling, we can get a format of the same original question uh, that's expressed as 1 over a cubed. So I wanted to show you that uh, version so that you can more convincingly see that a to the power of minus 2 actually is equivalent to 1 over a squared. So fairly long-winded, but that's the idea. There's that previous rule we, we've learnt about, about dividing um, terms with indices and subtracting the indices. That uh, kind of works out to make sense with this um, whole negative indice idea. So there's lots of examples on that video. I hope that helps you uh, process uh, questions to do with negative indices. The negative indice turn the, turns the fraction version of the, uh, the terms upside down. All right. So they're equal to each other, a, a to the minus 2 and 1 over a squared, just to show you a little illustration of that. Okay, and there we have everything to do with negative indices. I hope those examples help you in your studies. And peterblakemaths.com for all your math video needs. Thanks for listening.